Today in 1948, President Harry S. Truman issued Executive Orders 9980 and 9981, which began the process of desegregating the armed forces and the federal government of the United States and helped kickstart the modern civil rights movement. By 1948, African American soldiers had distinguished themselves in every major conflict since the Revolutionary War. Black volunteers served with various South Carolina militia units, including those of the Swamp Fox, Francis Marion, half of whose force sometimes consisted of free blacks. These black troops made a critical difference in the fighting in the swamps and kept Marion's guerrillas effective even when many of his white troops were down with malaria or yellow fever. A militia unit, the Louisiana Battalion of Free Men of Color, fought with General Andrew Jackson at the Battle of New Orleans during the War of 1812. Thirty years later, during the Mexican-American War, that same group fought alongside white units and distinguished themselves in battle. African-Americans also served on Navy ships throughout the 19th century in both combat and non-combat roles and made up a significant part of the peacetime Navy. During the U.S. Civil War, nearly 200,000 African-American men comprising 163 units served in the Union Army, and many more served in the Union Navy. Both free African-Americans and runaway slaves joined the fight. From 1863 to the early 20th century, African-American units were utilized by the Army to combat the Native Americans during the Indian Wars. The most noted among the group were the Buffalo Soldiers. Black soldiers served in both the Spanish-American War and the Philippine War. During World War I, 350,000 African Americans served with the American Expeditionary Force on the Western Front, including Corporal Freddie Stowers of the 371st Infantry Regiment, who was posthumously awarded a Medal of Honor for Bravery, the only African American to be so honored for actions in World War I. During World War II, African Americans once again stepped forward to serve. There were 125,000 African Americans who were overseas in World War II. Famous segregated units such as the Tuskegee Airmen and the 761st Tank Battalion and the lesser known but equally distinguished 452nd Anti-Aircraft Artillery Battalion all distinguished themselves throughout the conflict. With victory overseas in World War II achieved, black soldiers returned home. Despite their gallant service, many African-American soldiers returned home to the same discrimination and segregation they knew before the war. On February 12, 1946, just hours after being honorably discharged from the United States Army, Sergeant Isaac Woodard was attacked while still in uniform by a South Carolina police chief as he was taking a bus home. The attack and his injuries sparked a national outrage. Film and radio legend Orson Welles helped bring the attack to the national attention and to the attention of U.S. President Harry S. Truman. Good morning, this is Orson Welles speaking. They didn't give me a chance to explain. The policeman struck me with a billy across my head and told me to shut up. When President Truman learned of the attack on Sergeant Woodard, a U.S. service member in uniform, he was disgusted and became determined to address racial discrimination in the armed forces and the federal government head on. He made a strong speech on civil rights on June 29, 1947, to the NAACP, the first American president to speak to their meeting, which was broadcast by radio from where they met on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Recent events in the United States and abroad have made us realize that it is more important today than ever before to ensure that all Americans enjoy these rights. The president said that civil rights was a moral priority and it was his priority for the federal government. He created a commission on civil rights to examine discrimination across the board and make recommendations. In December 1947, the commission would publish its report to secure these rights, the report of the President's Commission on Civil Rights, which included recommendations on fighting racial discrimination. On February 2, 1948, President Truman sent the first comprehensive civil rights bill to Congress, and it included many of the recommendations from the commission. On June 26, 1948, over the objection of senior military officers, Truman issued Executive Order 9981, banning racial discrimination in the U.S. Armed Forces, and Executive Order 9980 to integrate the federal government. By the stroke of a pen, Harry S. Truman fired the first volley of the modern civil rights movement and set the country on a path to addressing racial discrimination head-on. It all happened today, 
1948. And now we know. And knowing is half the battle.